Okay. So what is your name? Hi, I'm Cheryl Young. I'm the naturalist here at East Harbor State Park during the summer. Oh, good. Yeah, I'd like to welcome you to our conservation day. I've got a nice display of insects here for you. Okay. So why aren't there any monarch butterflies? They had a terrible a triple whammy. Last fall, they had all the migrate, all the monarchs on this side of the Mississippi migrate down to a small area of, Miss, of uh, Mexico. Mexico, I know right that. Right at the right. end of the summer, and they had a big drought in Texas, so there weren't many flowers for them to feed on, and many died. When they got to Mexico, there weren't very many of them, and they had a very bad winter, so more died. Then when they finally did have their babies the next spring, those guys came up to the United States to lay their eggs, mm -hmm. and a cold snap hit them, so more died. So well, we've barely seen any monarchs. So spring. how do they do that, Cheryl? How did the, you think they make it? from Toledo to Mexico. It's just like the Native Americans thousands of years ago. They made that same trek from uh, from uh, Mexico up to uh, the Toledo area and they kept on coming back here. Well, how, how can the monarch butterflies know how to do you think it's a magnetic force from the... Well, there's a lot of different theories, and I really don't know which one to advance at this point. So I'd rather just... They just do it. it. Is just, it's just amazing. It's just one of the miracles of nature. So we're learning more all the time, and by, by tagging monarchs like this, you're able to find out if they do make it to Mexico, you can look up that tag number and find out just where that uh, butterfly either was raised or was caught in the wild. Oh, wait, wait a minute, hold a second. And you've already visited Back to the Wild. She's had several monarchs recovered from Mexico that she's raised and then released. Oh, isn't that wonderful? So it's pretty neat. And by raising them, you can really help their survival. Only about 90-some percent of them survive in nature. So what have we got here? So we've got a chrysalis. <laughs> yeah, this is you're, you're going backwards in their life cycle, kind of. But yep, that's the chrysalis. Okay. Oh, here, start out small. Okay. If you can get this small, we have a monarch butterfly egg here on the okay, back of a milkweed okay, leaf. Let me get my, let me get okay. my uh, focus. Okay. Here's a second one also. Yeah, it's right over there on the table. Go around that way. So the monarch butterflies can only eat, the caterpillars can only eat milkweed leaves. Right. So the we have milkweed leaves that we grow every year in our yard and we haven't seen any any this year yet. So. Yeah. Okay, so it starts out like that. Then a very tiny baby hatches and his first meal is his little eggshell. So you can see the remains of his eggshell behind him. Oh, okay, good. And now he's off to spend the next few weeks eating milkweed leaves. Okay, so this is... This is going to be him mm -hmm. over here. Yep. Yeah, we've got some smaller ones and then the real big. Okay. Oh, if you get one of those. Oh, you I'm going to remove the screen for you. There's even one here that's gotten as big as he's going to get. Oh, up here on it. Yep. Okay. Once, they, once they get as big as they're going to get, they're done eating. And they find a place where they can be comfortable and become a chrysalis. Oh, okay. So that guy's going to come up on the top of the cage and spit out a whole bunch of silk. And he'll attach his back feet to that ball of silk and hang upside down in the shape of a letter J. And his whole body will change on the inside and then he'll wiggle out of his caterpillar skin and be a chrysalis. Hmm. And then... But, yeah, that's really amazing that then they can fly back to Mexico. And well, it's only the very last group of them that come out as butterflies at the end of the summer. Oh, okay. And they're the ones that go down to Mexico. So we have several generations in Ohio. Oh, so there are, uh, there are, uh, I see all these, the chrysalis is here. Yeah, yeah. The very, there's yeah. very few of them this year, though. Mm -hmm. Last summer, uh, Back to the Wild and I both raised lots and lots and lots of monarchs. And this year we just have a few each. So she has these here, and uh, I have mine in my nature center behind you. I saw in, uh, we were in uh, Hocking Hills a couple of weeks ago, and I did see some of the lighter colored, uh, the, 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 the pale white monarchs. Yeah, I did see all of that. You know, instead of the orange colors. Well, when they shut their wings, they're paler. Is that what you saw? No, they, they kind of, they didn't, didn't look like this on the, they, they, they were some paler, paler yellow. I've never noticed that. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. So what's, what's in here? Anything? 
those are uh, black swallowtail caterpillars. Each caterpillar. Oh, I has see one. Yeah. Its own kind of food that it likes. These guys like things in the uh, carrot, with... carrot family. They're on fennel right now. Oh, That's fennel? a real close relative of dill. Mm -hmm. Looks like dill. Are they dill too? Yep. Oh, beautiful. Yep. So they start out as a tiny little white egg. Kind of I think all my eggs have hatched into caterpillars okay. right now, but they're small caterpillars and bigger caterpillars. And then in this cage behind is a larger one of them right here. Where's this one? This this is a yeah. They can be either darker oh, or lighter right, like this. Yeah. And this doesn't always work, but they have a neat defense if you want to keep filming. I'm going to gently squeeze him, and when he's alarmed, a thing like a big orange letter Y pops out of his okay, head. Well, and ready. it's real stinky. Okay. Here it comes. Tiny bit. Co there. You got oh, it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that makes a really nasty smell, so a lot of animals go up there, and that thing scares them, and then it stinks, so they leave him alone. Oh, so good. it's a great protection for him. Cheryl, this is great. Anything else we need here, you think? How about a dragonfly? Yeah, let's go dragonfly. Okay. I'll get his poop out of the cage because company's here. He just did okay. that. This is him. Yeah, baby dragonflies live in the water, and one of their favorite foods is baby mosquitoes. Oh, and good. the way they feed is just amazing. Their lower lip juts out and uh, grabs the food. If you want to see a picture so you can kind of understand what you'll be seeing. So I have some baby mosquitoes in an eyedropper, and I'm going to put them out there in front of him, and we'll see if we can get him to eat one for you. Did oh, you see his lip? Uh -huh. Good one. There, he got it. Good, beautiful. Another neat thing about him, he has gills, but his gills are up his butt. So he breathes by pumping water in and out of his butt all the time. Oh, great. And when he's really scared, he can jet propel himself by shooting it out real fast and yeah, get away. Yeah, I would think so. So then this is, uh, we'll have wings and fly away then. Yep, when he's ready, he'll just crawl up out of the water and uh, the grown-up with wings will come out and they'll leave this empty skin behind. I have have an empty skin here if you want to get a shot of that too. It's kind of like, cool. If you've ever found cicada shells on a uh -huh. tree trunk, it's the same idea. The baby there comes up out of the ground and uh, leaves that empty shell behind. Anything else, Cheryl? Well, all kinds of things, but I don't know how much time you have and how much film you want to spend. Okay, I got about uh, two more minutes. You want to get mosquitoes? Yeah, let's do mosquitoes. Okay. Could, the, could this man film here for you? He you, can come, you can come back, but he wants to take some pictures right now. Okay, we got eggs, larva, and uh, we'll, sh we'll show this for the pupa. Okay, eggs. Yep, these are mosquito eggs. The mom lays a whole bunch of eggs all stuck together as a raft. See how high they float up on the mm -hmm, water? Mm -hmm. So a lot, a lot, a lot of baby mosquitoes will come out of each clump of eggs like that. And when they hatch, they're a, a larva. A caterpillar is a kind of larva, too. See how these things wiggle in the water? Oh, and I noticed a couple of them have changed in there. Mm -hmm. The larva is the long wiggly things, and there's just a couple guys in there that are kind of round and move faster. Yes. Mm -hmm. Here's a here's a little bit I just got this morning, and I haven't separated the kinds out yet. Okay. But you can see the round, fast-moving ones are the pupa. A pupa is like a chrysalis. Mm -hmm. So any minute, those things can come up to the surface. You don't know when it's going to happen, but a grown-up mosquito with wings will come out of there and be ready to fly in a real short time. Wow. So if you have water sitting around your house, a mom mosquito can make a whole bunch of babies real quick. So these are pupas I've got to cover here because some grown-ups with wings have come out. I don't know if you can see them in there. Girl, yeah, I can see them real good, yep. yeah. And luckily it's only the girl mosquitoes that bite us. Mm -hmm. Girl mosquitoes have a long, sharp mouth part, and boy mosquitoes have a mouth part that's like a little paintbrush. Oh. Okay. Yeah, so they don't want they don't want to bother us. They have fluffier antennas that they use to listen for the sound of the female's wings. Oh. So they can find their girlfriend. That okay. that buzzing that we hate so much is a love song for him. <laughs> What do we got in here? Is this well, a... these are dead female and male mosquitoes, and then a, there's a mixed group of them, so people can challenge themselves to tell the girls from the boys. 
That's very interesting, huh, Zoli? What is that? That's a praying mantis egg case. Yep, hundreds of baby praying mantises can come out of one of those things. Over 200 eggs in 